Hello there. Good to see you again. This is Sandra Longmore, the creating of the Creating Calm Network. And um, we had a little technical difficulty, so we just got back online again uh, 15 minutes late if you've been waiting there for us. Uh, that I did do a shout out to a lot of my social media people through Hootsuite. So today is going to be such a fun program. It's the importance of story in your life. And I have a special guest, Mary Lynn Monroe of Unfolding Myths. And she is a great storyteller. In fact, storytelling is her thing. Now, first of all, I'd like to go over last week's key learning uh, things. So, the real challenge of life is to live, is to master the levels of daily living so that you can reach higher and higher levels of consciousness. You know, now, you might be thinking, am I really interested in this? Well, I want to slug it out, or I want to slug it out in my current perspective. Who wants higher consciousness? Well, I have a surprise for you. If you're listening to these words, there's a part of you that has been urged to reach these levels of vast consciousness. You are going somewhere anyway, so why not enjoy the ride? You are an apprentice of these historic times, and later you will be a teacher of your life energies. Your students will be anyone who benefits from your love and wisdom, including your friends and family, and anybody that you come in contact with. And the wiser and more compassionate you become, the more others will naturally seek your counsel and advice. So it's really a natural, inherent impulse of life to want to be more and to find more life to live. And it's natural for you to feel that you want to expand more. And Earth, Earth is a perfect place to experience all of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you can learn how to play with the energies of the Earth and make your life be a life of happiness and joy. You know, you will know everything through your own personal experience. So play more, experience more, and you will know more. So think good thoughts and see the action you set shifts. Set an intention to shift the way you want to and then get out of the way of it manifesting by choosing the highest frequency thoughts you can think of. Now today's broadcast Today's broadcast is the importance of story, and my mass, my special guest is Mary Lynn Monroe, Master Storyteller, and you're going to hear more about her later in the broadcast. It's going to be really, really good. Now, the importance of story impacted my life the other day. It is so interesting when it comes time to learn and assimilate concepts, they just usually show up as a pattern. In fact, that's how I became a TV host and a radio host. And now I'm starting a podcast. Our lives are full of patterns. And a pattern, according to Wikipedia, is a discernible regularity in the world or in a man-made design. As such, the elements of pattern repeat in a predictable manner. Any of the five senses may directly observe patterns. Conversely, abstract patterns in science and mathematics or language may be observable only by analysis. <clears throat> Direct observation in practice means seeing visual patterns, which are widespread in nature and art. Visual patterns in nature are often chaotic never exactly repeating, and often involve fractals, natural patterns, including spirals, meanders, waves, foams, tiling, cracks, 
and those created by symmetries of rotation and reflection. And patterns have an underlying mathematical structure. Indeed, mathematics can be seen as the search for regularities. Similar in science, theories ex explain and predict regularities in the world. In art and architecture, decorations or visual motifs may be combined and repeated to form patterns designed to have a chosen effect on the viewer. In computer science, a software design pattern is known solution to a class of problems in computing and programming. In fashion, the patterns is a template used to create any number of similar garments. Now think of a fractal. So think of a fractal, and I have a little slide here, big slide maybe, there's some fractals. And think of a fractal. A fractal is a curve or a geometric figure, each part of which has a satisfaction statistical character as the whole. Fractors are full in modeling structures such as eroded coastlines or snowflakes in which similar patterns reoccur at progressively smaller scales. And in describing partly random or chaotic phenomena such as like crystal growth or fluid turbulence or galactic information is like a fractal. So our purpose today is thinking about fractals. And here's some fractals that I designed at one time. There's a software you can get to design fractals. And the fractal is a pattern of the big picture, expanded and expanded to make a beautiful design. But in all parts of the fractal is the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is always, and this is the important part, is the always softest way, the easiest way for you to become the most expanded self, the 96%. If you remember in other broadcasts, I explained the idea. The theory of you and me, the flesh and bones of us as humans, is 4%, and the rest, the 96%, is expanded energy. And that is possible and desirable to tap into that 96%. Now, you will eventually get this bigger picture when you pass from the earth, but you can also achieve it today and live in that 96% and tomorrow by following the patterns of your consciousness and enjoying the ride of a bigger picture as it is revealed to you every single day. And that reminds me of something that happened this morning. I had this wake-up dream. I had just thought about my wake-up dream, and every day I record my wake-up dream thoughts in a journal, my wisdom journal. And I've showed you that before, but I'll show it to you again. Here's my wisdom journal right here, and I record my dreams every single day. I even have a matching pen. <laughs> turquoise and I record my dreams every single day and they really do start to speak to me give me lots of fun times to enjoy them and this morning this morning's dream was you are lucky you it was lucky love up and keep up at the highest level I think that's a good one so I love this. It just tells me my point of attraction. And today is very much an expansion in an expansion mode. Now as I go through my day, I will look for and expect lucky, love, and up. And to be revealed to me, this will be my most expanded bigger picture. This will be my fractal. When, I, when this will be a part of that 96% I brought into the everyday personality life. And I just love living this way. I, I want to tell you something kind of funny. When I wrote the script out, I put down 97%. And then I thought, oh, I have to change all that. But then when I thought about it, maybe that means that I am up. You know, my vibration is up, up into that higher percentage of most expanded self the 97%. So I'm 1% up. So I like that. 
I love living this way, and I just find it so much fun every day to have a teaching moment with myself and in the mode of being in love and being lucky and being in process of going up and guiding to my highest level. How cool is that? This this bigger picture pattern of fractal actually revealed itself to me a few days ago when I was driving home. I was with my grandson, Tristan. I should have a picture of him. Talk on it. I'll have to do that. So my grandson, Tristan, he's 15. His voice is low now. And anyway, we got in this conversation about how to figure things out. And he said, oh, well, that's kind of simple. We use this in school. He goes to the Vancouver School of Arts. We just use the six fundamental questions. And the six fundamental questions are um, evidence, perspective, connection, relevance, supposition, and transition. So if you use that to figure things out on any subject, you're going to get your answer, Tristan said. So I went through that. The first fundamental question of uh, the FQs, as Tristan calls it, is um, evidence. So you have to seek your own evidence of anything. No formulas, guides, books, or friends can do this for you. It is only when you have that inner experience will there ex- will it be evident for you because you have a bigger picture a fractal a spectrum of energy that is and can be seen and experienced only uniquely by you you get the fun of watching the multi levels reveal themselves to you sometimes in a big pattern and sometimes in a small pattern Now, the FQ2, or fundamental question two, is perspective. Your perspective on everything, absolutely everything, is going to go through shifts and changes. And last week, I told you the story about Kaya. She's my granddaughter. She's three and a half. And it's a good story, so I'm going to tell it to you again. That's what my husband always says when he repeats stories. It's such a good story, I'm just going to tell it to you again. Well... I witnessed great change when Kaya entered preschool for the first time. The first week, I got a text from my daughter, Chelsea. The text read, Kaya clung to me, and when I could finally get away, I heard an inhuman, blood-curdling scream, Don't leave me, Mommy. Second week. Text from Chelsea. Kaya got on her uniform with little fuss and with pointed finger told her dog, Chloe, I am going to school now. No whining or crying from you. Third week. Text from Chelsea. Driving into school today. Sure glad I had self-locking safety locks on my car because Kaya spotted her new friend, Paige, and screamed, let me out of here. I got to go play with Paige. No goodbye kisses or hugs for mommy today. Fourth week of school. Chelsea's text to me. Kaya went to school easily this week. However, she did come home with one of her barrette's missing, and a new one in, that replaced it that was sparkly, and a Hello Kitty lunch pail. I guess she's learned to trade because she also tried to take her backpack full of toys to school. Fifth week. Text from Chelsea. Kaya dresses herself with no fuss. Happily puts in new sparkly barrettes in her hair as she constantly speaks of her new friend, Paige. So everything, absolutely everything, your point of perspective goes through shifts and changes. Now, you can find connections that model, oh, the F, we're on the FQ, fundamental question three, which is connections. And you can find connections that model what you want in life. And together, the consciousness will be uplifted. I have been seeing this over and over again. 
I find myself attra- attracted to groups and activities that bring me into connections with what I need to access and maintain the higher frequencies of life. It just keeps getting better and better. Now, the Creating Calm Network is a really great example of this. And, you know, we're all different on the network in our perspectives, but we do have a common connection. We're all global servers and want upliftment for our planet and its people. And it's wonderful to watch how our network has grown. All the hosts and hostesses are operating from their highest frequencies and bring in information that those who are attracted to want to hear for their growth. It's just like a great pollination of the earth. The network is a vehicle for the energy frequencies to express and we on the network get to play bigger and gain more access to the frequencies as the listener gets to cross-pollinate whatever sweetness gathers in your group of friends. That brings us to the fundamental question four, supposition. Now, the Jobs and uh, Steve Jobs and multi, uh, Martin Luther King really show what it would be like if we didn't have them in in our world. So suppose our world was different. Suppose we didn't have any knowledge of the higher frequencies. Suppose we didn't have any great people in our history like Martin Luther King and Steve Jobs. What would it be like? Suppose your life was different if you didn't have certain things in your life. And that brings us to fundamental question relevance to you. So the thought of living in the idea of the pattern of a spectrum or a fractal, is that relevant to be like the highest level of you? Is it relevant to the rest of the planet? Mm, Well, you may feel you like live in two worlds, people who do not believe in these things and people who do. But when you're in contact with people who have another point of view, you will not be able to explain to them why you prefer the path of choice. Because as you try to convince them, you are actually going to leave the frequency of joy and the frequency, the flow of that, and the frequency of being lucky or in love with life, the frequency of loving, the discovery of expansion. So pure positive energy, the largest part of you, your joy, it just does not have to win any arguments or competitions or one-upmanship. It's a lower frequency than joy because you are lucky to be in the place of knowing how to love and stay up in those frequencies and enjoy the fractals of your life. In this state, There is absolutely no room for winning or competition or upmanship. Through living with the bigger picture of you, the fractal, you will learn how to transcend power struggles and move your relationship into the heart and soul. So is that relevant to your life, to our planet? Ask yourself that question. And then the fundamental last question, Fundamental question six, how does this all translate or transition into your own life? I don't know how it translates into your life because it's your story. It's your fractal, your bigger picture. But this is how it does in mine. Like a wonderful ice cream sundae with the cherry on top or my favorite Italian gelato. Your life will be sweet from the inside out and you'll be drawn and magnetized to all and that's good in life. And you know what? It's just plain fun. What brings you and I to another part of today's fractal, and that is how does the story translate into your life? What is the power of story? Why do you need a story? What is the power of story? Every day you play out some kind of story, 
and the story is most likely related to your core beliefs. So it's very important to figure out your own personal story. The story of your life, the memories that you carry, affect your now moment. And even the memories of what you dream in your sleep affect your now moment. All life memories affect your now moment. And I'm going to be exploring this more in another broadcast. And you can change your story. You can become either the hero or the victim of your story. And the most importantly, you can change your story to a hero's journey and overcome becoming a casualty to past memories. In coaching, I have a program that helps you go through your life story so that the oscillating narrative is something that helps you live in your now moment with grace and being in the role of the hero and not the victim. So what did you learn today? Well, so far, you've learned the six fundamental questions. You've learned about the importance of story. And I answered the questions, what if you did not live your story at the highest level, like at that 96%? The answer being, you can change your story anytime by having your life be the making of a hero, not the making of a victim. And it's never, ever too late to shift this. Now, in my broadcast, I have answered the questions of how to do this successfully. To play it again with you as a hero, not the victim. As the you right now as that hero that's more wise and is able to come home with new adventures and with an appreciation of life because of what you have lived. So how do you, how do, you do this successfully change your story? Well, hire a coach. Hire me. You'll love it. I have many clients change their perceptions on the past and live happily and fulfilling lives through our coaching sessions. So you can sign up for a class or you could just sign up for a class in self-help or self-development. You could listen to the Creating Calm Network and all the info energy programs out there on iTunes. And mine is soon going to be there. It's called the SHE, S-H-E, Self Energies for Personal Development. And I just have a, happen to have a little slide of that right there. I am going to be uh, changing my name of my show here from Golden Bridge to SHE because it's more descriptive of what I'm really all about. And that's to help express self-help energies and for personal development. Give me some feedback on that. I would love to hear what you think. So just take a look, you know, at the story and where it's been recorded. You can see cave drawings and, and the stories recorded on the Sistine Chapel and in photo es uh, essays. Then there's creation stories. And think of the story as the oscillating narrative and how it's enhanced our lives throughout history. And wouldn't it be a great loss to not have these stories around to listen and to learn from and to grow from? Well, in this next segment of the importance of story, you've learned that you, change, you can change your story from becoming a hero's journey to become a hero's journey and not that of a victim. You have learned that you can get help to change your story through coaching and books and podcasts and you stream TV. So now to answer the question, why should I do anything? What is the practical application of all this? Well, the point is, the story is your personal history and the past is made up of what you are today. Your ancestral narrative, the story of your life, is important because it is what you base your perspective of the world on. And it is important to be shaped the way that will uplift you, your now moments. Your ancestral narrative, the story of happenings in your life, is important for your children and your grandchildren and others because they get to grow when they hear your story. 
So now I'd like to introduce my very special guest and good friend, Mary Lynn Monroe. Now Mary Lynn is a collector as well as a teller of stories, beginning when she was in high school. She's a mother, teacher, priestess, and writer, using stories in every facet of her life. Her stories and thoughts on life are growing in her blog at unfoldingmyths.blogspot.com. And when Mary Lynn is finished with her story she's going to share with us today, we're going to take a look at some of her uh, online presence, and we'll take a look at that blog spot. So now I'm going to turn this over to Mary Lynn, and we're going to change places. And I'm so happy to introduce Mary Lynn. All right. This ought to be fun. <laughs> well, it's interesting because Sandra was talking about connecting with your ancestors. And this story comes from a class that I took um, with Louisa Tisch. And she suggested that we do this. Um, and it's also about our own personal origins. There's a Yoruba myth that when a child is born or is getting ready to be born, they go to see Ajala, who is the maker of heads, and they have to choose the head that they're going to come into this world with, um, and that's very significant. So all of us who are in the class brought our own um, background and our own history and our own ancestry and lineage to the story. So this is the one that I wrote. Almost time. Behind me stand all of my ancestors. They're in that cave, in that, that cave of remembrance. And I'm standing out here on the, on the ground on this solid stone, solid rock outside that cave. And I know that they're behind me. I've just come from there, where they've given me their blessing and their love and pointed me in the direction of the garden, in the direction of Ajala. And I know that they're back there, and I feel their presence. And it's kind of scary to be out here in the open. So I take a step away from that cave entrance, and one step, and another step, and another step. And pretty quickly, there before me stands Ajala. And I recognize him, because my ancestors have described him pretty well. He's standing there with this big grin on his face, just kind of watching me as I approach. I turn around, and I look behind me again, because all of my ancestors are still back there and I'm, I'm just so new to this. But I feel them with their hands on each other's shoulders and they stretch all the way back through that lineage. And I know that they're there behind me and for me. And I turn back again and there's Ajala. Welcome, welcome, new one. Come in, come into my garden. Come see what I have here. Come choose your head. What do you have for me? What kind of payment do you have for me? I step forward into the gardens. I look around with amazement. Oh, oh, look at this. I've never seen anything like this. It's so beautiful. I... I I don't have a large enough vocabulary to describe all of this. Can I, can I look around? Can I? Wow, this is amazing. No, no, no. You can't look around, says Ajala. That's just not done here. Well, I have all of these creatures here. And, and some of them are dangerous. 
you're so new to all of this. You may get hurt, and, and I have to be careful with all the new ones as they come through here. But I will give you a tour. Oh, thank you, thank you. And so we start. And we walk down this path, and it's a broad, earth-trodden path. And on the sides are all of these bushes with these big leaves and all of these brightly colored flowers. And there are trees that come up overhead. And through the branches of the trees, I can see the dark turquoise of the sky. And I just walk behind Ajala, fascinated. And of course, Ajala is very proud of his garden, and he talks and he talks, and he's describing all of the flowers and all of the bushes and all of the plants and all of the creatures that come walking by or strolling by or crawling by. And then he stops and he says, over there, and he points to this four-legged creature that stands in the side, right between all of the bushes. And he said, there, that's one of those dangerous creatures I was telling you about. That one, that one, if given a chance, will snap your head off. Ha! If you had your new head yet. It, that quick. That one is very dangerous. That one is wolf. And I turn and I look at Wolf and Wolf looks at me and we stare deep into each other's eyes and I hear the voice of my ancestors in my ear saying, this one, this one is a friend. And Ajala continues on down the path, talking and talking and talking and telling me all about the things that are there. And then I hear something behind us and I turn around and I'm looking down this path and there, there's this big shadow, but there's all of these little sparks of light that I can see and I'm trying to figure out what it is. And Ajala, well, I wasn't responding to anything that he said so he turns around and he comes back and he looks into that darkness too and he says ah you found another one this one I don't understand how you found this one this one's pretty elusive this one will char you like a marshmallow in one breath this one is dragon and I stare at the dragon and slowly it moves forward and it has these two big kaleidoscopic eyes with these bright, vivid, vibrant colors purple and green and yellow and orange and blue and they just keep turning and there's this fog that's created around its head from the smoke that comes out its nostrils and these little sparks that it keeps breathing out. And again, as with Wolf, Dragon and I stare deep into each other's eyes. And again, I hear this voice of my ancestors in my ear. Ah, this one too is a friend. I've been standing there still and quiet for so long that Ajala mistakes my stillness for fear and steps in front of me and says, I'll protect you from this one. It won't ever harm you. Be gone, dragon. And dragon disappears. But as I turn back to follow Ajala, I can hear a rustling off to my left that I know is wolf walking through the bushes and through the leaves. And I can see the shadow of dragon coming along on my right. But Ajala, he doesn't know, and he doesn't care. He's just so proud to tell somebody about all of the wonders of his garden. And then as we're twisting and turning down these paths, I'm just about to ask him 
where do I choose my heads? What, where are we going? When suddenly we walk out and there's this open area, big open space, and Ajala turns to me and says, We're here! Here are the huts. Here are the places where you can choose your head. There are three huts, one made of stone, one made of wood, and one made of straw. And I'm looking at the three huts and, what's the difference, Ajala? Why are there three huts? And Ajala says, well, they each hold different heads. That's all you're going to say? What about those heads? Oh, oh, let me tell you. Let me explain. Here, in the straw hut, those are my best heads. Those are the ones I use the best clay for, and I fired them twice, and they are perfect. I took great care to make them, and the glaze that covers them is just it's magnificent. They are just incredible. Okay. What about the other two huts? Well, the wooden hut. The wooden hut holds the ones that are, well, they're good. I've used the best clay, and, well, some of them got a little scratched, but they're still very, very good, and, and the heads from both of these huts will last you a lifetime. Maybe even more, but they will, they will last and they will be great, good, wonderful. Okay. And what about what about the stone hut? Well, says Ajala, <sighs> those those I don't know, somebody else might call them mistakes. Those are the ones I the clay may have been drying and, and when I fired them some of them may have gotten cracks in them and Oh, and then there's the glaze on them. Um, I, I don't know what happened, but no, but some of them didn't come out very well. Those I can't guarantee would last a lifetime um, or would last through any traumas you may have. And, well, well, to choose one of those would be a risk. So then Ajala turns, walks back to a bench in front of the wooden hut, and leans back and says, This head, this head is very important to you. You have to choose wisely. But the choice is yours. And he leans back, and he closes his eyes, and he waits for my response. So there I am, standing at the edge of, of this clearing, and I'm, I'm looking at these huts, and I have no idea. I mean, I'm so new to all of this, and, and choosing a head, this is the most important thing I could do. What am I going to do? So I close my eyes, and I listen for the voice of my ancestors, and I turn in every direction. But I have no idea in which direction is the cave of remembrance. We made so many twists and turns on those paths. It, it could be anywhere. I don't know. And I'm so far away. What am I going to do? I have no guidance. So I stand there, quietly, and I hear the rustling of the leaves as the wind blows through them. <sighs> what am I going to do? And off to my left, I hear a different sort of noise. It's a rustling, but it's a patter. And I, I turn my head slightly, and, and yes, it's the wolf pacing just inside the tree line, 
back and forth, and I hear every step as it paces on the leaves back and forth. And it brings me comfort (sighs) when I breathe out a breath that I didn't know I was holding. And as I breathe in my next breath, I, I smell sulfur, fire. It's coming from over to the right. And my eyes go off to the right. And I see the spinning eyes of dragon just inside the tree line and these little sparks. And I know the dragon is there, but I I don't know what they're going to do or how I'm going to make my choice. And suddenly, dragon bursts forward from the tree line and shoots out a flame and the straw hut bursts into flame and Ajala jumps up, throws his hands in the air and goes, My hut! My heads! Oh, Oya! Oya! Bringer of storms! Bring water to put out the fire of that hut! And there's a crack of thunder and just over that hut there's water. And all of a sudden, there's smoke over there. And Achala is so engrossed with that that he doesn't see Wolf run from the trees and go into the stone hut. And I'm watching, and out of the stone hut comes Wolf with a head in its mouth and runs over and drops the head at my feet. And I pick up the head and I hold it to my chest, and I hear to my right another sound, and I turn, and there's the head of dragon looking at me, and inside my mind I hear, Get on me, girl, and be quick about it. So I climb onto the back of dragon holding this head, and dragon rises up above the clearing, And I look down into the clearing and I can see Ajala shaking his fist at us as we're up above him. And I can see into the straw hut. There wasn't very much damage. The the roof burned off, that's all. But, But wait a minute, those heads, those heads in that hut, they, some of them are misshapen. Some of them, They don't look very good. And I realize that Ajala has lied to me. The straw hut held the heads that weren't very good. So Dragon turns and flies back to the path of stone that was between the Cave of Remembrance and Ajala's garden. And I slide off the back of Dragon holding on to this head still. I haven't let go because I have to have my head. And Wolf comes running out of the garden and sidles up beside me. So beside me are Wolf and Dragon. And I pull back my hands and I look at the head. And this head is beautiful. It's, it's perfect. It's amazing. It's my head. And I am very grateful to my ancestors who have sent these two allies to help me in my dealings with the trickster, Ajala. (laughs) That is the end of my story of getting my head. I loved writing the story um, and then practicing telling it because the telling of it is different from the writing of it. And it changes each time I tell it just a little bit. But stories are very important to how we see ourselves and to how we see 
the world around us and to how we view things. And one of the things that I do want to say is that when um, we were in the class, when we were writing these stories, um, one of the things Tish told us was about these three different huts or three different places, uh, levels of heads. And many of us were kind of wondering, why would anybody choose not the very best head? And one of the people in the class said that the reason um, that that person chose one of the F heads or one of the heads that was not quite as good was because that person came from a family of A-level heads and there were so many of them that they'd become arrogant and that person's role in that family was to teach them how to deal with um, someone who wasn't perfect. So people make those choices based on you know, what not only what they personally need, but what is needed for the good of their tribe and of their family. So, yeah, that that was was pretty good. That was an amazing statement to me. Now, do you want your your head back here? <laughs> Yeah, I bet I bet you want to have more of Mary Lynn. I know I sure do. She just was so cool. I just love this. I'm going to show you. Um, ah, okay. I have to do redo something here, so I'm going to show you an internet, uh, some of her internet sites and some of mine. So um, I have to go over here and change my region. Oops, not that one. Okay. So it's this one. All right. Hang in there, everybody. All right, there we go. Okay. So now I bring up uh, Chrome. And I got to check to see if you're seeing what I'm seeing. You indeed are. Okay, good. So this is uh, Mary Lynn's internet site. And it is. Um, unfolding myths, and I just have to make sure. Uh oh, <laughs> I have to make sure that the sound is on. I'm hoping it is. And okay, hello. Yes, it is. All right. So everything isn't perfect here, but we will get there. All right. Back to this unfolding myths. This is Mary Lynn's blog, and um. Uh, the first one up here is Lunatic, Are We? And she has so many great uh, archives here to read about. And I invite you to go to it. It's uh, unfoldingmiss.blogspot.com. And, uh, and just explore some of her stories. And, I, and then this is Mary Lynn's Facebook and she's and the name of her Facebook here is Mary Lynn Unfolding Miss. So become her friend and uh, find out more about when she posts some of her stories and get involved with the the uh, storytelling community. And this is Mary Lynn's internet site called um, Mary Lynn Magdalene Calling .com, and it's full of wonderful information and she's learned uh, getting more and more information up there and stories and by the way if you're interested this this uh, painting here was created by uh, me and actually Mary Lynn and I both did ceremony and we uh, remember that day when we were out there and yes. we did ceremony and we uh, brought in energies that we wanted for to help her on her path and me on my path. And this is how the painting turned out uh, with Magdalene calling. And it's almost like uh, looking, revisiting it here. It's almost like a time warp, right. the way it's going. Whoosh, whoosh. So, huh, that's very interesting. I love that's on this book, too. So that's about Mary Lynn. And I just just love her to pieces, and I want to invite you to get in touch with her as well. And you can also uh, 
contact me, Sandra Longmore, at sandralongmore.com. And I was going to put up my Facebook. Okay, there's my Facebook. This is my site. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, and uh, my fan page. And on my fan page, I'm under Transformational Life Coach. And I'd love to have you be a friend of me there. And then also, I'm also under my personal page, which is, everything is under my name, Sandra Longmore. Um, and so you just have to find me uh, any place under Sandra Longmore. And that's my personal page, and that's my husband, Tom, and myself on vacation on a Mexican Riviera cruise. We're going to go on another one in April. I love cruising. This one's going to be an Abraham Land Cruise. And then I wanted to show you the Creating Calm Network site. So here is the Creating Calm Network. And the network is full of information, di different blog, uh, radio programs. Uh, the television section is right here. And then the radio section. And the important thing is that you sign up for the newsletter. So here's the newsletter here. And that's a program. It's a really good program. It comes in your email every single Sunday. And uh, so sign up for the newsletter. Get more information about all these beautiful hosts, radio hosts. We're also going to have a learning center here, a bookstore. And this one might be interested to you, how to become a co host. So Anne has lots of information about how to become a host. And she is opening it up to others who are interested in being a host. So you can host your own one to two hour show each week and you can broadcast from your own online studio invite your guests and promote your program with personalized links so play big you know come on with us and and be a host why not it's really fun and then i wanted to show you my internet site and it is having a remodel not intentionally, but anyway, that's what happened when I when I did some things through Word, WordPress that I guess I shouldn't have done. But the important thing here is you have this. It says sign up. Sign up for my newsletter, and that'll get you in touch with all my tips and my gifts, my free gifts, and, and, I, and my discovery lessons on coaching. So the important part is there, and I plan on working on it all this weekend to get it looking pretty spiffy. So that is my Chrome presence. And now back to eyesight and summary. So summary of what to expect next. So in summary of today's broadcast, the really challenge of life is to master the levels of daily living so that you can reach higher and higher levels of consciousness. And by changing your oscillating ancestral narrative to a hero's journey, where you live through it as a hero, not the victim, where you are today as that hero, far more wise from the experience of living your life up to this moment. And you have learned more about the six FQs or six fundamental questions of evidence, perspective, connections, relevance, supposition, transition and how to use these questions successfully in evaluating anything. So to think about any subject you can use those six fundamental questions and today you have learned the importance of story and Mary Lynn Monroe you have experienced a story firsthand and now next week's topic is re recognizing who you are and how to live with inner directness. Now, you may have many reasons why you cannot change right now, right? <laughs> we'll find out the reasons how you can by tuning in next week. And uh, so I already showed you my sites and I'm going to sign off for now. So goodbye for now. I love doing this broadcast, and I'd love it if you contacted me, and I know Mary Lynn would love it if you contacted her. So 
signing off now, Sandra Longmore, Golden Goddess, and Director of the Podcast, She, Self-Help Energies for Personal, personal Development. Bye for